I asked my AI assistant if school was worth it. And if we ignore money, the answer is yes, but we can't just ignore money and the rest of the internet seems to disagree with the research. $100,000 debt decisions they when they go- They are high school, but with more binge drinking. There's no need even to have a college degree. Most talking points are about school versus life, life skills I wish I had when I left school, and things we've learned as an adult that we think we should know about at school. I could talk about a lot of these issues for a long time, but I think at the end of the day, school can't teach us everything. There is just far too much information in the world for school to cover it all. So what actually is the point of school, and by extension, is it worth going to university? The first modern school, the Boston Latin School, opened in 1635. But Plato, way back in 385 BC, was giving speeches to educate notable men. And by definition, a school is an institution, or an organisation with a place, for education. Education being the process of receiving information as a learner or giving out information as an educator. So education can happen at work, in your business life, at home, or just in everyday living. They'll come out and they won't have practical experience. Yeah, I mean, because they read a bunch of words. I've lived a bunch of life. <laughs> right. I think there's always a question what the nature of the educational good is. Um... Looking back, modern schools were used to teach factory workers. And the schools were used to measure quality standardized tests, whether they were above average, average, below average, for the quality of work they were going to do so they didn't mess up, make mistakes, or injure themselves whilst working in the factory. If that is the point of school, to compare students to the tests given, then school does a pretty good job of that. But jobs, careers, and the workforce in general has drastically changed. And when I come out the other side, somehow I'll be able to pay it back. Right. That's not how life works anymore. What it's worth for a college education and how much debt you're willing to saddle yourself it with. It isn't necessary to pay thirty or $35,000 a year to go to some um, big name school. Global quality of education is tested. For 15 and 16 year olds, it's done by PISA, and the USA is way down in 25th, UK in 13th, and you have countries like Estonia and Finland in the top 10. But for tertiary education, i.e. higher education, the UK and the US fill up all of the top 10 spots, and the countries that were in the PISA top 10 are nowhere to be seen. If you graduate from college with straight A's, you have to do some serious soul searching as to why you chose to spend your time doing that. The A students work for the B students, the C students run the businesses, and the D students dedicate the buildings. I hated school, generally, right? Because it was this instruction following thing. Primary and secondary education is above $6,000 more expensive per person when compared to tertiary education. Before we say tertiary education isn't worth it, let's see what the numbers say from a 2021 report. 85% of people with tertiary education are employed compared to the 58% without. People aged between 25 and 34 earn 38% more than their peers if they have tertiary education. People aged between 45 and 54 earn 70% more if they have tertiary education. And people with tertiary education live five years longer reporting better health. Yes, all of these numbers are subject to interpretation and the sample size is mildly biased because of the OECD countries that were tested, but those numbers are still pretty good. China is one of the countries right at the top of the PISA rankings for primary and secondary education. It's also not a third world country, it's got a productive workforce, so why aren't any of the universities in the top 10, and depending on the rankings, not even in the top 25? I don't think it's pronounced PISA, so I'm going to go with PISA report assesses way more than just standardised assessments, but the main focus is the math, reading and science education of students. University rankings, however, look at the learner's experience, the lecturer's engagement in academic research, and then whether you get a job after university, soon after university, or not. I personally see some issues with the way universities are being ranked and measured. Student satisfaction is a big part of the measures for learning experience, but student satisfaction is heavily influenced by the motivational climate the student is in. A student's perception of control, usefulness, success, enjoyability, and if they think people care about them and their education. But that can encourage the educators to make the learning experience too pleasant. Because learning is not all fun and games, it's frustrating, it's irritating, there's uncertainty in there and there is a lot of failure, trial and error, mistakes, it's just not a fun experience sometimes. If those parts of the learning experience are 
cushioned by the educators for a better satisfaction score, then the perception of learning may increase, but the actual learning, not so much. I do recognize that psychological safety plays a role in the learner's environment, but I think that's in control or a lot of the control of the educator rather than the system itself. So a lower satisfaction score may actually be better. Lecturers need to engage in research, and my guess is that there is an assumption that if you do research, you're a good educator. But being a researcher takes time and a certain set of skills. Knowing and understanding things is not the same as being able to educate other people about the knowledge and understanding you have. An effective educator has techniques, methods, frameworks, and a lot of evidence behind the actions that they're doing to help the learning experience of the individual. A researcher doesn't necessarily have the time or the desire to learn these skills and this evidence behind how they're going to educate. And considering university rankings weight research and citations very, very highly, maybe that is why the PISA countries don't have universities in the top rankings, and maybe you want a university that's not in the top because you want to be educated, not told what the research is. Institutions that are in cities or well-built-up areas get a lot of people that graduate with jobs because of placements and all of the available opportunities in the area. And it's the immediate time after graduation that most of these metrics are actually being looked at. So if you're in placement, you already have a job. If you're in a city with loads of jobs available, you can find one fairly quickly. But the numbers say that 85% of people with tertiary education over 25 are employed compared to the 58% that aren't. So most get a job anyway, just not necessarily directly related to their studies or close enough to where they studied. And those with jobs immediately after graduation don't necessarily keep those jobs for very long and they may move on to do something else. Now there are loads of arguments against and for standardized testing, most of them leaning against standardized testing, but let's have a look at the relative deprivation theory instead. Basically, we compare people that are in our close environment rather than a global or national average. Those in the best school that have the best grades may be the best in the country, but they compare themselves to other people in their class, so someone in that class that is comparing themselves may not be the best in the class anymore. So the people at the bottom of that best class see themselves as at the bottom, not the best. During my research, I actually found that Malcolm Gladwell had already applied this theory into school education, and he called it the elite institution cognitive disorder. As human beings, we do not form our self-assessments based on our standing in the world. We form our self-assessments based on our standing in, the, in our immediate circle. He found that being at the top of your class was better for education, motivation, action after class, and future prospects because of the perception the learner had on their abilities. Some universities say, we only hire from the top schools. You should say, you moron, hire from the top stu students from any school under the sun. Grades don't get you a job. They move you forwards in education where you don't actually need to be at the top university. You just need to be at the top of the class at the university. You should never go to the best institution you get into, never. Go to your second or your third choice. Go to the place where you're guaranteed to be in the top part of your class. Higher education is not really higher education, it's more like higher research. And the question, is university worth it, should really be, is the curriculum going to teach you the skills that you want to learn? I think explore what you want to do before committing is really like the, the key thing. And keep yourself flexible. You know, where I wasn't afforded certain opportunities, and if afforded opportunities, I could be open. Because the value of the degrees comes from this massive exclusion um, and, and what you're really running is something like a, a Studio 54 night. Tests were for quality assurance for the factory workers, so they knew what they were doing, they could do the job and put the effective people in the right places. Now, tests just cause a lot of stress, anxiety, and arguably actually make the educational system worse. You can't test someone's competence on something they haven't done, but that is literally what standardized tests try to do. It's not educators' fault, it's not the curriculum's fault, it's just the system being outdated. So what's the point of university? The same as school, exposure to new topics, new ideas, some you may pursue, but most probably not. Develop skills to help you function in society and be somewhat useful. In Cognitive Load Theory, John Sweller talks about biological primary skills and biological secondary skills. Primary skills are those not really teachable because you've already developed them just throughout living life. 
I quote, If a student cannot organize information, it is more likely that they suffer from the complexity of the particular information they are dealing with, rather than ignorance of how to organize information. Those people in the PKM space maybe consider that one. Then secondary skills are culturally important to functioning in society. Things like reading, writing and other elements of the curriculum. Alongside skills that are not in the curriculum as subjects. Philosophy of understanding the nuances of the world. Psychology of human interaction. Communication of ideas and productive discourse. History, and not just what happened, but why it happened, and not just things 50 plus years ago, but the news, like now, what's happening. Human skills, like honesty, trust, empathy, perseverance, humour, curiosity. The science of figuring out what is next. Technology, because wow, technology is evolving quickly and we need to be able to use it to our advantage. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has weaknesses. The key is really to understand what your mistakes and weaknesses are so that you can learn from Is that uh, you have to work out your salvation on your own. You have to save yourself. And, uh, and, and that's, that's I, th I believe that is the truth, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a somewhat then, uncomfortable students, one. I ask one more time. What is school for? An educator's job is no longer to prevent injuries in a factory. Because most people don't work in factories. An educator's job is not to give out loads of information. We have the internet for that. An educator's job is not to give out solutions. Because Google does that. An educator's job is to bring awareness to an idea. We don't know what we don't know. An educator's job is to bring fun and exploration inside of learning. Because learning is hard, difficult, and sometimes painful. An educator's job is to help people learn to learn a skill. Learning how we learn helps us learn ourselves. The modern school should evolve away from tests and towards practice. The curriculum should evolve from test-related subjects to real-world use cases. And educators should be freed to educate the student rather than the system. Evolve the system to create interested learners, scientists, artists, rather than scaring them all off. What do you think?